Okay, thank you for uh, taking part in the interview for the mm -hmm. Nuclear Medicine and Molecular Medicine podcast. We're here in Denver in Colorado at the Society of Nuclear Medicine meeting. Um, mm -hmm. And perhaps you could just tell me a bit about yourself and uh, where you work. Okay, uh, do I have need to say hello? You can say hello, yes. <laughs> Hi, uh, everyone. Uh, my name is Deidre Wang, and I graduated from Johns Hopkins University with a PhD, and uh, now I'm working with uh, United Imaging Healthcare. Right, excellent. Mm -hmm. Now, United Imaging Healthcare is something that uh, most people uh, in the uh, nuclear medicine community aren't familiar with. Um, it's mm -hmm. based in uh, Shanghai, and, and, and what do they... What machines do they make? What do they make? Uh, they make uh, all kinds of modalities like uh, PET CT, CT only, and DR, MR, PET, uh, and they're also developing PET MR. Right, so I think what's particularly interesting is that they've got um, a PET CT and PET MR that use mm -hmm. digital detectors. Yes. So, yes. so they've got uh, uh, LSO uh, crystals and uh, digital photomultiplier chips, correct? Yes, yes. Right, so that's very exciting. Mm -hmm. So Part of that is that uh, is is the high sensitivity of these cameras. Yes. So you can do um, um, get a lot more counts than you otherwise could, yes. and also better timing. So how much better are they than conventional uh, PET CTs? Uh, I think yeah, as you mentioned, it's uh, high uh, high sensitivity because and also we have a larger axial field of view, which is thirty centimeter. Ah. It can cover the body. Like you, you use uh, fewer number of beds for a whole body scan, right. and uh, also we have very high uh, resolution, so you can see all the lesions more clearly. Right, and the um, uh, the sensitivity of the cameras. I saw you. That was about uh, sixteen. Uh, yeah, sixteen uh, kilo uh, kilobecquerels kilo 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 yeah. per uh, yeah, kilo, thousand counts uh, per yeah. kilo, for, per yes. megabecquerel. Yes, yeah. and a conventional cameras uh, something like about uh, uh, four or five. Yes, isn't under it? ten, definitely under yeah. ten. Yeah, and um, the timing, mm -hmm. um, the uh, the time of flight timing that mm -hmm. you've got on the machines. How, what's the timing? How many nanoseconds? Uh, about uh, 400, 400, uh, 400 to 500. Yeah, I don't 400 to 500. Exact so that's, number, but that's, that's yeah. fairly good. I mean, yeah. you've uh, uh, conventional ones are sort of about five or six. Yes. So it's a little bit better. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I think we can probably try to improve it because currently um, other companies are catching up. So. Um, yeah. Right. I think the, the, the GE and the Philips yeah. systems are about uh, 250 to 300 yeah. nanoseconds timing. So not quite as good, but I imagine your machines are, would probably be less expensive than those machines, were they? Uh, yes, probably. And uh, also, and uh, the one point is our uh, spatial resolution is much higher than their uh, scanner. So it's like uh, when you go for one pro uh, one um, probability uh, property of the scanner, you probably have to um, sacrifice a little bit other parts. So the ma major um, property of our scanner is a high spatial resolution and sensitivity. Ah. That's what we aim at. Right. So the spatial resolution of your systems, what, what do you get? Is that because you've got a very uh, very small, small yeah. voxels, correct? Yes. So what resolution are you getting in uh, the clinical 2 system? 2.9 millimeter. 2.9 millimeters. That's yes. extraordinary. Yes. <laughs> we, can, we have very good uh, uh, brain images because of the very high uh, system resolution. Right, and okay, so that's that's a very uh, that's very impressive. That's mm -hmm. a very high level of uh, resolution and uh, very good sensitivity. So that's going to make things like um, uh, it's going to make mm -hmm. things where movements an issue, where people have to stay still for a long time. Yes. You'll be able to get the scans done done quite quickly. It's like yes. in oncology, it's hard for people to keep their whole their body yeah. still. Um, or if you're doing imaging where you uh, where you want to minimise the radiation dose, where you're doing mm -hmm. multiple studies, then yeah. Uh, then you can do it, uh, give lower dose, um, or if you need to do scans faster, where you're looking at uh, looking at um, uh, flow studies in the brain, for example, and things yes. like that. Yeah, um, yeah, that's that's that, that, that's excellent. You showed um, you showed uh, a talk where you looked at optimizing their resolution, mm -hmm. and um, how long were the what what was the how many how long per bed position were you looking at? Is, uh, currently, in the hospital, they use two minutes, uh, two minutes per bad position. Wow. But we are working on um, to shorten it. Yeah, well, I was looking at um, the contrast on the lesions, yes. and you're getting excellent contrast with just one minute. 
the yes. pre bed position. Yes, I think one minute the image quality is really good for diagnosis. Yeah. So probably we can go lower. Okay. Um, that's very interesting and, and very exciting. Um, mm -hmm. um, what else would you like to say about uh, what you're doing? You've got a pen MR in work? Is that, that's with a three Tesla MR incorporated yes, in the Yes, uh, I'm not uh, in that project yet, yes. but uh, I, I heard they are already starting to probably do some clinical trials. And uh, I have seen some image qualities, and it's really good. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Yes. And also, uh, except for the PET-MR, we are also working on developing some uh, advanced applications for the PET-CT scanner. For example, we are trying to um, correct for the motion to uh -huh. do the data-driven gating to try uh, to yes. simplify all the procedure and make things easier for technicians. Right. Yes, I saw the um, I saw a paper earlier on where they did data. Uh, driven gating. Yes. And it actually positioned the uh, a region of interest or a, or a region in the centre of the heart mm -hmm. and then looked at count changes as the heart beats. And as long as you position it in the centre of the heart, mm -hmm. you're going to get an increase on, um, on systole um, yes. of counts and a decrease on diastole. Um, as long as you that position's in the middle, and then you could use that simply mm -hmm. to uh, simply to do the gating without having to apply an ECG. Yes, that will make, make things easier for technicians because you know the technicians have to set everything up uh, near when they work near the patient. And uh, if we have the digital driven gating, we don't need the technician to put on any equipment on the patient. So the dose will be uh, reduced for the technicians. Right, and it also just means it's there's less complexity in terms of yes. in terms of setting up. So, yes. so you're going to incorporate this in your clinical software? Uh, yes, definitely. We are, uh, actually, we, are, we have uh, applied for patent, and uh, we are working on implementing it into the machine. Excellent, excellent. Well, this is very exciting. It's very new, and I. I um, how many machines have you got out there now? How many machines are pet, pet machines? Do you know? Uh, I don't know the exact number, but I think it's a lot. Really? Yeah. yeah. So it's very exciting, and uh, it's great to see some new players and some good competition in this area. And yes. It's very exciting actually, to see we, you. We look forward to coming to U.S., and uh, yeah, actually we have entered uh, Europe and Japan, so we're looking forward to maybe compete with the big companies right. here. Right. Well, you've been part of the Explorer product. I mean, um, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Cherry, I've interviewed yes. before on the podcast and uh, mm -hmm. and basically the Explorer products where you're going to have a whole body uh, mm -hmm. pet scanner. Yes. And um, and uh, you're doing that by having an extended field of view of your camera that covers the whole body and of yes. course that's going to be very good for dynamic studies and uh, first first in man studies where you want to do accurate radiation dosing and actual quantification. So that's quite exciting that yes. the, the United Scan is part of that mm -hmm. um, uh, that project. So th that'll be great to, to look forward to. Is, is that um, that you had a mini version of that scanner already working, isn't it? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I think they started doing some uh, monkey studies. <laughs> right, right. So that's also very exciting. Yeah, so is that going to be available for clinical use? Oh, yes, definitely. I think you can, you can use it to image the brain. Actually, the image quality will be very good because the, size, uh, the field of view and the sensitivity and the resolution will be very high. Oh, excellent. And the probably will do some uh, brain studies. Good, good. Yes. Well, th thank you for taking mm -hmm. part of the podcast. Uh, I appreciate your time, and uh, mm -hmm. and good luck with the future. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much.